Okay. All right, thank you very much. Well, this weekend's gonna be nice. Okay. Miss Lynn, Miss Lynn. Let me first say this to the people of Danbury. Um, whether you are Republican, Democrat, Independent, unaffiliates, I don't care who you are or what you are. This show is about issues. And, and I'm trying to behave. Try not to disrespect anybody personally, okay? The issues are what they are. And if you don't like well, what I'm discussing, just turn off the TV, <laughs> go drink some Kool-Aid, okay? And th that's what it is, okay? It's the issues. So, anyways, let's, let's talk about the Danbury Charter. Okay. Now, from what I understand, there is an initiative taken by City Hall to somehow amend the charter. Actually, we approved a resolution at the last Common Council meeting. It okay. required a two-thirds vote of the council, 14 members. So if the Democrats had wanted to, they could have blocked um, this, this resolution, and we wouldn't be revising our charter, our constitution. There were two votes against it. I voted against it, and Tom Soddy did. I don't think we need to revise the charter. I think we need to follow it. Why? Well, you know, um, in May, in May, the mayor voted uh, twice uh, in violation of the charter to create a tie. So I like to say, don't revise the charter and say the mayor can vote two times on every council issue. Follow the charter. Follow the rules that are there. Are um, they, oh, wait, wait, wait. Why are they revising the charter again? You revise the charter when you agree to, and we did. We're going to revise the charter, and then those those revisions will be sent to voters in November 2008. There'll be lots of transparency, okay, lots of public hearings. There has hearings. to be an issue. Yes. What is the issue? Let me tell you what happened in Ridgefield. When Ridgefield revised their charter, their uh, selectman, Rudy Marconi, went from uh, serving for two years to a four-year term. One of the things that could happen if we revise our charter in Danbury is we could have a four-year term for mayor, treasurer, city clerk, town clerk, uh, for the citywide offices. That could be one of the changes. There are many other changes. We could take the office of corporation council, which is now appointed by the mayor, and make it a civil service position. Okay, okay. I want to know. Yes. I understand what could happen. I want to know why are we taking this initiative to revise the charter right this year? Well, the charter hasn't been really revised since I think 1977. There was a minor revision in 1990, so it may be time to look at it. But people need to understand that there will be a commission formed. Uh, the Democratic Town Committee uh, Chairman, Joe DeSilva Jr., will get to recommend three people three Democrats to serve on this commission. Uh, the Republican Town Committee Chair, Wayne Baker, will get to recommend three Republicans to serve on the commission. And the mayor's office will pick three unaffiliated or independent people to serve on the commission. So these nine folks uh, will get together, hold hearings, uh, listen to what you have to say, what I have to say as a council member about the charter, and they'll come to us with a report and say, we recommend that. And then the council votes on whatever their recommendations are, and we send that to the public. We send that to the voters of the city of Danbury to approve now, or to turn down. Do you think down. this will happen this year before November election? No. Um, the charter revision is almost an 18-month process. So we're not going to vote on it until 2008. Now, can we trust the common council members to do the right thing. Can, can they <laughs> review the charter for the sake of Denbury residents, or can they do it for self-serving purposes? Can we trust our politicians? I to don't do think the, so. Because, That's because why I voted against it. <laughs> currently, currently, I have a problem with our politicians. Yes, yes, I understand that. The people who are looking at us right now, yeah. okay, can they trust the politicians to mm -hmm. change the Denbury Constitution, to amend the Denbury Constitution for for the good of the city. No, you can't trust them any farther than you can throw now, them. Now, you know you are a politician, That's so you're including right. yourself, too. I'm including myself, too. Now, what good can come out of this? Um, not, I, I'm not hoping that anything good comes out of it. I'm hoping that nothing bad comes out of it. So, why have it? Because the majority of the council thinks it's necessary and appropriate. As I said, we, we approved the resolution at the last Common Council meeting. There were only two votes in opposition. Did we 
did did City Hall go to the public and ask the public to take a look at the charter? I mean, no. uh, who who gave them the approval to just change the constitution without <laughs> us addressing it to them? The mayor asked uh, for us to. He asked for an ad hoc committee to consider charter revision. That committee met. Uh, they came back to us this month with a resolution and who adopting. Was, and who, who, who were in the committee? Well, a lot of council members attended, but you know, I can't off the top of my head tell you who the chairman was and who, okay. you know. That, that bit of information escapes me. Well, I would like the, the public to, to know this. Please keep a very close watch um, on this um, charter revision because, as you can see, um, the, the coming council members, they all need to look at very seriously in terms of changing the Danbury Constitution. And you cannot trust politicians at all. <laughs> and and um, I, but, but, but you cannot trust them. And when they are going to change the Constitution, please take a look at take what look. they are giving to you and make sure that it's not a waste of time and do anybody, um, well, do the people get paid for this, or this is a volunteer? No, it's, a, it's another, it's a committee process, a commission okay. process, but I think one interesting thing. But are we, are we going to pay for this in terms of no. the, the tax and, money? No, I mean, if, if the charter's revised, you'll have to print new copies of the charter, but no, it, it really isn't a big cost issue. Okay, good. Now, let's, I hope we don't. I hope we do not make the mayor's office from two years to four years. Well, you'll have to put your two cents in. You know, I, I <laughs> hope not because, because we want to get them in a short amount of time. If we want to get rid of them, we get rid of them right away. To me, it's like this. Every two years, we re-elect them. They have their chance to prove themselves to the public. Four years is too much. They can make a lot of mistakes in four years that cannot be redone or, or fixed in a long time. Now. Let's talk about the Denberry Reviews. Uh, well, the News Time printed um, an article um, regarding um, the reverter clause. Uh, Denberry <laughs> Reviews land giving policy. Yes. Now, I don't know, but to me, I have to give Al Robinson a lot of credit. Mm -hmm. And I also do the too. News Time, but especially him, Hot City Block. Um, Al Robinson has been really pounding the uh, surface in a, in a reference to. Le, um, Elmer, Steiner. Elmer Steiner. Right. And could you explain to us exactly what is the situation with Elmer Steiner, that, that land? Well, in uh, 2001, the city gave the land Elmer Steiner is on to Ann's Place, which was a 501c3, a nonprofit organization that does great things. I mean, they help people with cancer, and um, nobody's against that. Uh, uh, however, after that, uh, the, the location was actually too small for Ann's place. They moved on and they sold the property, and they sold the property for $75,000. Uh, what the mayor is asking is that we have a reverter clause where if the city donates land uh, to a nonprofit organization for a dollar or for nothing, that if the organization moves on, the land will revert back to the city. Okay. And I think there's an extra protection there because I think you know that my son went to Hartford this session and worked very hard to get a bill that says any municipal sale, transfer, or lease of land has to have a public hearing so that folks know what's going on. So let, let we got this, this issue covered. Okay. But you were right. This is after the fact. The horse is out of the barn, <laughs> you know. It's after we've had a travesty like this because after they sold that that property to a local developer for seventy five thousand, two years around. later that piece of property was sold by the Danbury developers for four hundred and sixty five thousand. Now that's what three hundred and and eighty five thousand dollar profit. Okay, and, now uh, I want the public to understand this. Danbury gave free land to this nonprofit, they sold it for 75000 okay? That's, that's your land from your tax money, okay? Then this, this developer turned around and sold it for $465,000. It's nice money if you can get it. Within two years, okay? 
Now, did we get anything out of it? No. <laughs> no. Now, do we have similar situation where we give free land I think to there organizations? Are, I think there are very special occasions when organizations come to us and they want land donated or transferred for it could be any good purpose that we would support. And what the legislation is that the mayor has proposed is it's fine to do that, but you need this reverter clause. If that organization no longer uses the property, has a use for it, no longer needs it, is going to vacate the property, then it has to revert back to the city and city ownership. And that's a good thing. But it's after the fact. It's after we've had uh, something occurred that now, really is a travesty. Now, is there anyone to blame in reference to this land? <laughs> because you can't, because once you, because once you give the land to uh, a nonprofit, should there be a clause when they give that land? Or is it with the understanding that they were going to keep it? How do you keep track of that? Because you can't really blame anyone, right? You can't. You can't blame anyone. And that's why the mayor's coming with a, a fix on this particular situation. He says we can fix it by having a reverter clause, having the land revert back to the city. Now, do you are you aware of this developer somehow having a close relationship to the nonprofit organization, or is this just something that just I don't happened. think they had a close relationship to the nonprofit organization. They're very well known in Danbury. You know, you're talking about Dan DeBono, who is in commercial real estate. You're talking about Rich Rainey, who is in commercial real estate. These are people who are very savvy. And uh, if they see a deal like this coming down the, the turnpike, they're going to jump all over it, and they're going to benefit from it. But we don't as taxpayers. That land was ours. We gave it to Ann's place. Um, a private developer bought it from them and sold it at a tremendous profit, you know, 400%. It's, uh, it's disgraceful. Okay. There is also, and, and you think this is, this is actually going to benefit the city? It protects the city. It, it, it can't do anything about the situation with Elmer Steiner, but it will protect the city in for future deals where we give land uh, to okay. a worthwhile organization. Now, here is another issue that I'm going to further develop um, this fall. They are changing the, um, um, the voting booth now. The, They're changing the machines. The We're machines. going to an optical scan. Yes. Right. Now, if you are a senior citizen and, and you're watching my show right now, I want you to pay very close attention to, to what's going on. I don't know if they didn't purposely do this, but it's going to make it much more difficult for you because now they're just not going to pull the, 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 levers. the levers anymore. They have to actually do the... But it's like the lottery. You have to fill in the circle. Fill in the circle. And we know what happened in Florida in 2000, right? Well, they had, they punched cards. Well, they punched, <laughs> but, but think about it, though. How many senior citizens do you know is going to sit there and look for all the names that they want to vote for and actually fill in the, the little um, circles. They're, circles. They're okay. ovals. They're not right. circles. Right, okay, the ovals. <laughs> Look. We, we hope they will. We need to have Marge Gallo or Marianne Doran but come do, on your program you actually, and talk yeah, about these ballots. Yes, I am going to actually go to City Hall and talk to Marianne and see if, if um, those two ladies can actually come on the show to discuss that. Personally, if you're a senior citizen, my advice to you is this. Because think about it, right? If you're having problems standing up already, and you have to stand there and look for everybody's name you want to vote for and fill in the blank, it's, it's going to take a, 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 a longer time. We're going to have 11 privacy booths in every polling place. People will be able to sit down and complete their ballot. So, but you know what, though? What? What about doing absentee ballot? Can that work? Yes. I think if you're a senior citizen, the best thing to do is do is vote absentee. Vote absentee. <laughs> we crash your absentee ballot now, right away now. Okay, fill in the little dots right now and send it in because to me, it's gonna create a problem because I don't see them getting in and out of um, you know, of of the polling booth in in uh, you know less than 60 seconds. Well. 
they're going to fill in their ballots and then take it to the optical scan reader, and that's very fast. It just gobbles it right up. So, so would you advise for senior citizens, probably the best thing to do is? I think you hit the nail on the head, I was, Ivan. Yep. Um, <laughs> senior citizens, if I don't care what you are, Democrats or Republicans, what you do is call City Hall, make sure they mail you in an absentee ballot, and send that out. And another thing I'm going to tell you is this. I, I am really going to focus on the issues of, um, of Danbury, Richfield, and, and Bethel. Bethel. Right. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is this. You're going to get a lot of these politicians calling you, coming to you, and, they want, and they're going to tell you the issues. They're going to tell you what they're going to do for you. Guess what? We heard a lot of those lies. We heard the lies and the lies and the lies and the lies. I think we're going to change the election this year. What we're going to do is this. When they come to you, the first thing you need to tell them is, be quiet. You need to hear from me now. You tell them what, the, what your issues are, and I want you to make sure that when, they, when you heard them in the radio, TV, or anywhere um, in a group setting, they need to address your issues. And that's the only way we're going to hold these people accountable. accountable. Yes. Do not let them come to you and tell you what they're going to do for you. Because it's the same message that they preached to you the year before, the year before, well, the election before. And the Democrats, they, they, um, they sing the same song. The Republicans, they sing the same song. I think it's about time for you to be heard and make sure that they address your issues. Mm -hmm. and, and if you had an issue last election, and they didn't address those issues. Don't vote for them. Don't vote for them. <laughs> don't bother vote for them. Okay? You may not have a, a Democrat mayor now, but you have Democrats who are in the coming council. You have Republicans who are in the coming council and also the mayor. So hold these people responsible by you do the talking and they do the listening. Next week, Gene Eric is coming on the show and we're gonna Look at, talk money. Talk money. We're going to look at the people who actually donate money to both the Democrats and the Republicans. We're going to look at who these people are. Okay? The goods, the bad, the kickbacks, the etc. Ugly. The ugly. <laughs> Everything is out in the open. See you later. Bye bye. Some slithered in. The heat caught us by surprise. The days were long, the nights were longer, but the nights were paradise. Feel the heaven move hanging in the sky again. Intoxicated by the sweet summer scent, floating through the night. Scream away into the darkness and glory of this hot sun.